Good morning, everyone. I apologize for the delay, uh, some technical difficulties. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the first uh, facilities committee meeting after our reorganization. Uh, we've got Dennis Maroney, we've got John Hammond. Oh, sure. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Cini, for joining us. Um, first order of business, will I will call for a nomination for chair of the facilities committee. Mrs. McCammon. I'd like to nominate Dennis Maroney. Do I have a second? The Mr. Cini. Uh, all those in favor? Any other nominations? No. No. All right. Mr. Maroney, congratulations on a, another round of chair of the facilities committee. Thank you very much. And thank you all for joining in. And uh, I just, as, as I was thinking this morning, I'm reminded of the U2 song, Angel of Harlem, a cold and wet December day. The snow is melting on the ground. It's not very much, but- We didn't need plow. <laughs> Still kind of feels that way. So uh, thank you. Today is Thursday, December 9th, uh, the facilities committee meeting. Um, our order of business today is the update on the installation of solar panels on the school buildings. And I will hand that over to Dr. Adler. Just get my minutes here. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for being here this morning, either remotely or, or in person. And uh, th this sort of uh, brings full circle. Uh, last spring, the board got the update from uh, the uh, Connecticut Green Bank uh, to for the installation of, of solar on the roofs, and particularly this phase of Henley Homes and Oxridge. Uh, they are with us this morning because uh, they have a, an update for us in terms of going out to bid and being in the state of readiness uh, to move forward. So uh, we're pleased to, to have them return this morning. Um, Mr. Lynch, I don't know if you have any other uh, introduction you'd like to make or we'll just go right to our participants. No, we just go right to the Green Bank. Is, is, um, is, I know Alan's on, is Emily on? I'm not quite sure who's yes, taking the lead. Yes, Mackie and Emily are both on, Alan as well. Uh, Alan or, or Emily, can you hear me or Mike? Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, yes. I, I just can't see you on the screen. Oh, there you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michelle, would you, can you take that wee posting right off the. There's a wee notice that it's being recorded. Thank you very much. You may not be able to see it, but there's a lovely just post, post it right on top of your face. So I'm just trying to get it removed. <laughs> Hello, uh, Emily, you seem to be on the screen first, so uh, good morning to you. Good you morning. Want, if you want to pass it on, uh, you can, but uh, with that, I, I will just uh, pass it over to you. The PowerPoint uh, that uh, came in yesterday, uh, the board has in front of them to just to, to move through if you want us to move through that. But with that, uh, I'll just turn it over to you and give us a wee update and walk us through the main uh, talking points. Thanks. Sure, thank you. Um, I also have the PowerPoint up and I can share my screen if you if someone can um, enable that function. Yeah, I, think, I think Michelle will be doing that. Yes, she'll, she'll, she'll do that for you, yes. Okay, great. Good morning, I'm Emily Basham with the Connecticut Green Bank. Um, and I'm also joined by Mackie Dykes and Fiona Stewart from the Green Bank um, and Alan Sabins from CSW Energy. We're the, we're the solar map team. Um, we've got an update for you this morning on the projects we've been developing for, oh, I'm not sure what we're seeing. We're seeing somebody else's that's, screen. That's probably uh, just Michelle at the moment. Oh, okay. Let's see. Well, I'll, I'll get started just sort of reintroducing ourselves. It's been eight months since we've come before the committee. Um, so um, I'll give a brief um, reintroduction to who we are and what our program does. And then I'll turn it over to Mackie to provide the update on um, the, the four projects. So uh, Mackie, Fiona and I work for the Connecticut Green Bank. We're a quasi public state agency uh, we were created 10 years ago to provide sustainable financing to deploy as many clean energy projects as possible throughout the state. So we've got a lot of programs 
um, and products to help do that. One of them is our solar municipal assistance program that Darian has been participating in. Uh, and solar map is uh, essentially just a uh, you know, full service technical support for towns and cities who are looking to install solar on their municipal or school buildings. Um, and we've been working with towns for, for many years to install solar projects. Uh, but we more recently created the solar map program to provide just additional assistance um, from start to finish and just simplify um, the whole process of going solar. Um, so we have been working with Darianne. Should, should I wait for the screen? Michelle, are they moving it forward themselves or? They can move it forward themselves. They just need to tell me where to start and then I'll go from there. What slide should I start, Emily? Um, I don't know about others joining via Zoom, but I can't see the slides. I just see that Alan has started sharing a screen, but it's black. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well. I'll try again. Okay, we're just gonna try again. Okay. Can you see it now? It's the same thing. Yeah, just a black. Is it possible for me to share my screen to Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Let me try that. Mm, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Sorry. Try now. All right. I got it. I can see it. You can see it. All right. Can you guys in the room see my slides? Yes. We can. Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So this slide, we're just jumping in on really the, the support that the program provides is kind of bucketed in these, these four steps. Um, and it describes sort of, you know, what we've been what we've been up to with with Darian. So uh, first we start with a list of um, you know all the school sites. We start with a comprehensive analysis of where um, the best candidates are for on-site solar projects that would use the Green Bank's uh, solar power purchase agreement. Um, and then working with Mike and the team, um, we conducted site visits developed um, initial system designs and secured the incentives that are available for these projects. Um, and essentially, once we narrow down the, the candidates, the short list of, of sites that are good candidates for projects, we move forward developing those projects on behalf of the town. So that includes the incentives and it also includes running a competitive process to select a contractor who would, who would actually install the system. Um, and one benefit of um, participating in the Solar Municipal Assistance Program is that we're helping towns across the state sort of in lockstep. So Darian is joining other towns across the state in um, the same steps in the same process. And they were included in our RFP for a contractor partner. Um, so by bundling all the towns together and the projects that we're developing, we're able to achieve economies of scale when we go out to bid for uh, a construction partner. And that allows us to deliver, um, really optimize, maximize the savings that we're able to, to offer the town. So at this point, uh, we've just wrapped up that um, RFP process. And um, we're here to present uh, refreshed PPA numbers and a proposal for, for the town to consider. Um, and so this next, oh, uh, as I mentioned, um, Darian is joining other towns. Um, this is our second round. So there's nine other towns who are also um, participating in solar map 
a total of 26 projects, um, which would install seven megawatts of solar. Um, and on average, our, our PPA rate that we're able to offer towns participating in this round um, provides about a 33% discount to your utility rate. So we're really um, happy to be able to provide those, those savings for this group of, of projects. Uh, and this table just kind of shows the project milestones that we've um, that we've hit so far. Um, and Darian, you know, we've introduced the project in March. Um, we came before this facilities committee in May, um, uh, conducted site visits, um, presented to the full board, um, and then move forward securing those incentives, running an RFP for a construction partner in October which we just wrapped up. Um, and so the, the final steps left are presenting here um, at this facilities committee and next week at the, at the full BOE committee as well before executing. Emily, I'll just make a wee quick note to my board members. The slide that they're seeing has one, you have got an adjustment of uh, December 9 and December 14th as uh, 21. So you can see that just correction. So just. Thanks. Yeah, there's a couple of tweaks. Um, we're, we're good. <laughs> between sending the slides over and, and presenting this morning. So yes, um, we, are, we are here today and not a year from today. Uh, this slide just shows the, the towns that we've worked with to um, install solar either on a municipal building or on a school building using the power purchase agreement. So it's been a very successful program. Um, and a successful pathway for towns to install solar. Uh, and next we'll give it an overview of the power purchase agreement. So I'll turn it over to Mackie to run through the next few slides. And thanks Emily, good morning everyone. Thanks for having us. Um, and I know there's a little bit of a review but uh, it's been a while since we were here. So I thought we'd just real quick also give an overview of, of what the actual agreement uh, and sort of how this is what the agreement looks like and how this is structured. And, you know, last time we were here, we were really just talking about uh, an overview of the program and asking for your permission to continue sort of developing the projects. We didn't have final pricing yet. Just to make clear today, you know, we are, we, we're back. We've, we've got every, we got all the pieces put together. That's what we've been working on. So, you know, today we'd be asking for your approval on the actual sort of project parameters uh, and the ability to jump in into finalizing the this actual power purchase agreement, which, which I'll talk about how it works. So um, again, this the, this is a different structure than you just buying uh, buying a system yourself. Um, the Green Bank and our partners will actually own the system uh, and will sell you the power uh, at a discounted rate to your utility rate. Next slide. So why do this? Uh, aside from the green benefits uh, and the environmental benefits, the other the other big one is savings. Right now, you're paying an energy bill for all these schools. Um, after the projects, you'll still pay an energy bill, but it'll go down uh, depending on the, the size of the solar system because you don't need to buy as much electricity from the utility because you're getting a portion of your electricity from the solar system. Uh, so your your EverSource bill will go down. Uh, what, Darian? Yeah, I think you're oversourced. Here's our bill go down. Um, you'll still have a payment for the solar power, uh, but it's cheaper than utility power. So when you combine the solar payment with your energy bill, it's less than what you're paying now. Next slide. And some of the other benefits are, I uh, think one of the other biggest ones is that we, we front all the, the capital to, to build the project. So there's no out-of-pocket cost for you, uh, and you're able to start saving money from, uh, from day one. Uh, we're as the owner of the system, we're responsible for all of the O and M uh, throughout the the twenty year term, uh, and we have every incentive to make sure that the system works because we only get paid for the electricity that it produces, so it needs to be working. Um, and we're able to take advantage of a lot of the, or not a lot, all of the the federal tax credits that are available, um, which would essentially just be money left on the table uh, if you were to buy it yourself, since you don't pay federal taxes. So we, we monetize those and pass them on to you through the, through the lower PPA rate. So a lot there, but I wanna take plenty of time to actually jump into the details of the projects. So let's, uh, let's move on to, to those unless there's any questions. 
Great. All right. Well, we'll start with Henley. Um, this. I just hope, one second, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just have one question about the agreement itself before we get into the specifics. I know in the first year, in round one, you indicate that the savings are somewhere between 22 and 59 percent, and then this year it's for round two, 33 percent. Can you just walk us through how those financials work, please? The first one is a range, so it's it's showing you for our round one projects the minimum discount and the maximum discount that we were able to provide those towns um, this year. We just provided the figure as an average. We had many more projects um, and towns participating. So it's just a different way of showing the numbers. And as you'll see here, each project sort of stand on its own. You know, you pay different buildings have different utility rates. So your baseline is different for every project. And then the PPA rate is different for every project because there's a number of factors that go into it, such as the construction cost, which you know, differs per project, the level of incentive, how much the system actually produces. So every PPA rate will be different. Uh, every baseline electric utility cost is different. So we'll, I mean, for each project here, we'll talk about what the specific discount is. But as Emily said, then for round one, we just gave the full range. For round two, it was just the average discount. Okay, thank you. And Mackie, before you jump into um, the figures here, I will note, um, in addition to the dates, there were a couple of other numbers that were tweaked since we um, uh, since the packet was provided to you. Um, so the project size and the estimated annual production might be slightly different on the screen than what's on your packet. So we will, of course, send along this slideshow um, for you to have the updated version um, for your records, but it might look a little bit different, just slightly. Thank you, yes, it does, thank you. So a lot of this will be familiar aside from the particularly different numbers as we've furtherly refined the projects. Um, you know, you've got the system sizes, what that system is going to produce over a year and what you're paying for uh, for your utility power now. That's that effective utility rate, 10.7 cents. Um, I think what, what's changed is when we first talked, we were just estimating what a savings might be. That's, uh, you know, we were just across the board saying, well, what would a 10% discount look like? We think we can deliver at least that for these projects. So that's the number we had last time we talked to you, the, the 9.1 cents. Uh, we, you know, as Emily referenced, we had a very successful RFP construction cover, we were able to drive construction costs down significantly. So the actual PPA rate that we're able to offer in the final agreement would be uh, 6.7 cents, uh, which is a 37% discount to, to what you're paid now. Um, and this system would produce that the percent solar offset to the utility. Think about that as every, all the electricity this building needs in a year. Uh, to, to run. Um, the offset is how much in, in that year the solar will be able to provide. So we'll, we'll, we'll be able to provide about just over half of the power that this building needs in a year. So think of it, half your power will be 37% cheaper uh, than, than the situation now. Next slide. For homes, a uh, slightly bigger system. Um, here, uh, the, again, we're producing about half the power that the, the building needs, um, a slightly higher PPA rate at 8.2 cents, but for, for homes, you actually pay a lot more, uh, in, in, for your electricity. So this is a significant discount over half, uh, 55% discount to, to your current rate. Next slide. And then Oxridge, um, we don't yet know, because there's a new meter going in here due to the construction. So we don't yet know what the effective utility rate is. Um, but <laughs> can, I'm a, based on everything I've seen, I'm 100% sure it's gonna be nowhere close to 4.8 cents. Um, that's actually the, the cheapest PPA uh, out of this entire round. Uh, this was just a, uh, an attractive project, uh, you know, thanks to the, the new construction aspect of it, I think that we, we got the installation costs very low and it's well situated. So the production's quite high. Um, so we're able to, to deliver, I get what I, what I, one of the most attractive PPA rates I've, I've seen uh, in the last few years at, at 4.8 cents. And this will produce again, about half the power uh, that, 
the the building uses. Um, so you know we'll work with with y'all on finalizing what that actual utility rate will be um, once it's available from from the utility. But again, I, I no, it certainly won't be as low as that that four point eight cents. Next slide. And then finally, uh, Royal, uh, would think one of the, the bigger of the, the two systems, um, again, uh, able to deliver a significant discount, 60% to, uh, to what your utility rate is, producing just over half the electricity the building needs. And the final PPA rate here is just over seven cents. Next slide. So putting all this together, um, and I, I personally was very pleased to see the the significant discounts uh, to the to the utility rates uh, that we were able to deliver. Um, we can't add up all the savings yet because for Oxreds we just don't know what you're you're going to be paying. Uh, we need to know that baseline in order to calculate the savings. If it's helpful uh, for the for the next meeting, we can. We essentially, like, we could assume the worst and assume that your base, worst or best, I don't know how you look at it, but we could assume the, the utility rate would is the same as Henley um, and calculate the savings based on that. Um, if, if you think, you know, having a number there would be helpful. But overall, taking Oxridge out, um, you're looking at first year savings of, as you can see, just over 31,000, average savings of almost 41,000 and uh, 815 thousand term savings, uh, which you guys would expect to get much better once we have Ox Ridge uh, added in there, given that, that significantly low PPA rate. So let me pause there, um, see if there's any, any questions or discussions around next steps. Hey Dennis, I have a quick question. Um, just in terms of components and supply chain um, and component costs, is there any concern about the implementation of these projects, uh, given what we're seeing out there right now? Um, yes. Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of that is, is baked in, uh, just in terms of the you know, schedule is something we pay close attention to um, when we're evaluating the bids. Um, and also the, uh, you know, just the, the level of procurement that the firm is doing, you know, are they a larger firm that is buying large, you know, bundles of equipment and storing them and then parsing them out to projects. Um, so, you know, we, we are seeing supply chain issues, especially with our round one projects, um, which are in just starting construction. Now, um, there are some pieces that, uh, you know, are, are causing a month or two delay. Um, but, you know, I, so I, I think we, we might still be seeing some of that. I mean, th these, these projects won't actually go into construction until at the earliest summer, uh, most likely a little later in the year. Um, so, you know, we think given the fact that the, the installers we've selected are on the, the larger sort of more sophisticated side, uh, have a lot of experience with procurement and have baked a lot of sort of the market fluctuation we're seeing now into their proposals that we'll be able to, to stick to, well, <laughs> that the supply chain issues won't, shouldn't cause deviations from the schedules that we'll lay out in the, in the PPAs. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it for our questions. Great. Well, I guess we'll sort of yeah turn it back to y'all as to um, the the next steps, and you know if there's a desire to take this to the the, the full board um, or any work that needs to be done in advance of that. Mike, Mike, sorry, I do have Jerry. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. I do have one question. Is there any minimum start date and completion date for these requirements? Given that you know supplies change, is there any requirements there? Um, we've factored in, as you can see here, starting before the end of next calendar year. 
Um, you know, if we if we see delays, then it can start to impact our economics. To, there's there's certain timers on the utility incentives, um, which those can start to decrease if we don't meet certain milestones. Um, so, you know, we're conservative. We bake in. To, so we would sort of take a worst case scenario and we bake in several months delay um, just, just to be safe in our scheduling. But, you know, I, ideally we're starting, as you see here, before the end of the year with at least the, the construction. Okay, thank you. I do, I, I'm sorry, I do have one more um, or to, just a request. I'd love to see the assumptions on on Oxridge included with the appropriate disclosures that this is the worst case guesstimate um, at this point, just it would be neat to see that factored in. Yep, we'll just assume the, again, I guess worst case scenario from a savings perspective, best case scenario for what your utility rate is, uh, that, that 10.7 cents. Gonna say, I believe the ZREC is 18 months from the award. You have to start the project. Is that correct, Maggie? You've it's actually you've got more time. Um, you, we get the award, and then you have to select a date that you'll, which is anywhere from a year to to two years out from when you'll start delivering the power. Um, I I. I don't recall offhand what we selected for these. Uh, it was certainly, we always just, again, just to be safe, we always pick the latest. Um, I'll look that up while we're, while y'all are continuing to chat though. And, and just one final one for me. I just want to name it because you, you spoke to it, I think. In fact, I know you spoke to it. And it just shows up here that these utility rates right now that we have in some cases are different for each building. That, that is, that's a correct assumption that we've built in because that's what it says. So I just want to name that and make sure that we're on the same page with that. That's right. We got the utility bill for each building and review that because yeah, yeah, the, that you're exactly right. Different buildings, different meter. You can actually have different meters in the same building that are paying different rates. So we, we, we reviewed each electric bill for each meter that we're, that we're looking at putting solar behind. To, to make sure that we have the appropriate offset rate. Thank you. Uh, when this comes back to the board, I would love to see what we're talking about vis-a-vis -vis dates, what the actual inception date of the project is and what that stop is at the end, because we are talking about and concerned about supply chain issues. So if we could have those parameters included in the presentation to the board, please. Great, okay. And then to answer the earlier question about the, the ZREC, so our date to, uh, for this, for all the Darien projects to begin delivering power to the utility is July 15th of 2022. That's when construction needs to be done, all the utility inspections need to be done and we've turned the system on. Which, I mean, obviously, as you can see, we're, we're planning on being beyond that. Um, but that's, that just means that we start losing a little, a little revenue. Um, we bake that into the PPA rates that you see here. We have time from that. I mean, we're not, we don't lose the utility incentive. So Mackie, can you repeat that? This, what they just, they we're supposed to start by July 21 of 2022. Um, after that point, there's declining revenue, but that's not impacting the numbers we see here. That just impacts you on your side. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions? So do you want us to, <coughs> to recommend moving this forward to the board on Tuesday night? that will be agreed to. So, so I'd like to, to move it forward. I do have a question about the, the PPA agreement because that, that's a, a, a legal document that's gonna take a bit of time to review. So I, I, I can't see that being ready for the board for Tuesday night. Um, the, the, that will need uh, you know, legal counsel to, to review that. But, but beyond that, uh, we can certainly take, I think the Connecticut Green Bank will be ready with their update and 
we're, we're ready to provide this, this level of update to the board if, if it's deemed appropriate. I, I would like to do that, but I'm certainly open to any other questions or scheduling issues. So, so then Alan, in terms of, of the steps in the process, um, what you're looking for the board to, to approve this, but what impact does the legal agreement have on that? Well, everything. Right, <laughs> um, right. So I would have, to, I would have, would have to come back at the end. You have to come back for a final approval. Yeah, yes, of, of that. So this would really just be a presentation to the board and then we'd, we'd have a final approval um, when the legal document is complete. That's the way I would see that, Ms. Mr. Well, Lynch. You, you, Give you a presentation to the board of ed, mm -hmm. and then you get a draft of the purchase agreement mm -hmm. to send to Chip and Goodwin, have a look at it. Okay. Make any tweaks to it to our benefit. Okay. Protect the district, and then get back to the board to vote on. Okay. Great. Mac, is there anything else we should be doing? Um, that's kind of what we're, we're considering doing. No, you're right. The, you're right that the agreement is the big thing, um, and it's not. You know, uh, to be <laughs> to be frank, it, you know, it's a it's a complicated agreement, um, and you're right. Negotiating those takes some time. Um, so yeah, it's a deferred. We, we see some uh, BOEs or, or or BOSs that sort of high level approve the the projects and then delegate to staff the authority to negotiate those or others that do sort of what you're discussing, which is where we, they approve the concept and then negotiation happens. Um, and, uh, and we come back for sort of the full legal approval. So I see it both ways is a really just sort of deferred to y'all, but yeah, I really agree that the agreement is a significant piece of this. And, you know, there's other terms in there that, uh, Occasionally, we do see projects not move forward just because of, of the PPA. So, I, it does make sense to you know to make sure there's lots of scrutiny on that. So, are we all in favor of, move, of recommending this to the board on Tuesday evening? Yes, for a presentation on Tuesday evening. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you guys very much, Mac. You're you guys are available for Tuesday, I believe. You're you're already planning on it, I think. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I thank you for, for your time and I uh, appreciate you being here collectively because that, that's helpful. And it seems that just with a few edits to this and revisions for Oxridge, it seems, and also the, um, you know, the, the clarification of start date, end dates, that type of stuff, we, we should be good to go. Yep, we'll get that cleaned up in a refreshed presentation for the full board meeting on the 14th. Fantastic. Okay, thank you, Emily. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. Oh, one point I've making, uh, we, I forgot about this. We did sign a PPA with the town a few years ago for a project. So we can, uh, you know, there's, so there's some structure in place that at least the town got comfortable with. So we'll see if we could start working from that. I mean, a lot's changed in the last few years, but ideally we'd start from something we'd already agreed on. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is the discussion of the library reimagined project at Darien High School, Middlesex Middle School, and Tokenik Elementary School. So the, the, the big, um, the, the backstory to this is, uh, this originally started uh, some years ago with the libraries reimagined. And at that point, all the schools were, were involved in a, in a in the project discussion, you know, the high school right, right down to all the elementary schools. And uh, at one point there was, that, that was coming through capital, uh, it was coming through volunteerism and so on and so forth. So we took that off and the board, we decided to, to deal with the, get removed of the portables. And so we limited the project to those particular schools at this particular point. Uh, but that leaves the discussion about the libraries at the other schools, which are still uh, certainly two of them, the high school and the middle school, while big enough spaces they need to be upgraded and tokenic to a lesser degree. Uh, so those, those uh, libraries, there's a plan for those libraries. Um, as you heard in the this update from Mr. Lynch last time, we took out, we took out the components of those out of the capital because it, it was going to become a, a major project, uh, the size of it and the scope of it and the, the, the cost of it. Um, so the, the uh, projects, there's, there's larger versions of them that were given out this morning, which are just larger versions of, of what was in the, in the uh, actual 
packet itself. Uh, so it's really considering next steps in, in that particular project. And with that, just sort of teeing it up like that, Mike, if you want to add anything to that, it's missing there. Uh, the, these projects, uh, they differ. These, these were the three schools that we're not removing portables from and where it was felt the size and the basic structure of the space with its air conditioning, lighting, et cetera. Uh, it didn't need major renovation or replacement as opposed to the other three elementary schools. So like Dr. Adley said, when we coded up the numbers for doing these three projects, uh, it becomes a larger project than uh, what the Board of Ed would normally be charged with being the building committee for. And so in the operating budget the facility for the upcoming year, there is a, a line item in there to hire a, uh, a, 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 an, an expert, an architect, an educational planner who will take these three concepts and, and bring them forward with a set of education specifications for the, uh, the Board of Ed to consider adopting uh, and, and then move this project forward to the Board of Select. So just backing up a little bit, when we the libraries imagined were conce were conceived, and there were multiple drivers, right? There's Alan, what you talked about, which is just needing to modernize some of the facilities just as a baseline, but secondly, to make the facilities look um, a little bit differently. But part of why we wanted to make them look differently was because there were some educational directives that we were trying to achieve. And it, at the same time, we did oh, we did take a look at the scope and sequence of the library curriculum, and those changes have been made. So part of this is also to make sure that the the facilities are in line with what we're trying to accomplish in those spaces educationally. Correct. Yes, have we, have we put it all under the umbrella of the learning commons type type concept? Yes, and so that that the learning uh, instructional practices K to twelve are, are consistent. Yes. So I think. You know, we will discuss whether or not that goes to the board, but I think it would be helpful to remind the board in the community of how we got to this point that this is, you know, not just a facilities project, there's a yep. large educational component to it. Please. Yep. So do we want to talk through the designs or do we go do we are we more talking about the proposing and spend some money to hire? Well, well, certainly, um, we're happy to have discussions either now or otherwise about the actual components of it. it. It this has been through, in many ways, it's been vetted a couple of times um, through different through the original study and then through uh, Northeast Collaborative. Uh, so they have sort of completed that, but they, they they set it aside for, in this case, this type of uh, discussion. So, um, at this point, I think we're. You will see in the budget, as Mr. Lynch said, and I'm getting an eye of that it's not in there at this point. Okay, all right, okay, well, that, we'll have to discuss that offline. Um, but anyway, we would need then, we would need funding for to, to take this forward conceptually. And, you know, it probably won't end up exactly the same, the same way as the other schools, the elementary schools won't end up exactly the same, but the concepts would, would be there and the concepts are consistent K to 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're looking for then the, the committee to move forward uh, with, well, we're not officially, but to recommend to the board that we move forward with a, uh, a study on these that's, three. Yes, that's again, what I would like to do. Preliminary think, yeah. work has been yep. done. But, yep. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Senior? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm fine with that. Just when, when did this process all begin? Well, the, the process uh, sort of predates me a little bit because when I came in, the uh, uh, the library reimagined was already on the table. But it, um, I'll say at that point, um, the way it was being presented, I didn't think I just it, I think it just needed a more comprehensive approach and a. Uh, uh, just a bigger look at it and uh, uh, so so we basically put it into the capital suggested a capital project so 
it certainly predates my time, but uh, certainly you could probably say since since I got here, it's sort of. Yeah, no, no, I know you took it to another level, Alan. It was the conceptual stage. I was just wondering when it started, probably a, a, a year before your arrival, I'm assuming. It, no, it started probably in 1516 or even the year before that. Um, there were preliminary discussions about the possibility of doing things in the library, but they were not formal. It's just, if you're asking when I first heard it, you know, whispered on the streets. Um, then there was a library's reimagined committee formed, I believe in 1617. Um, that was maybe a year in duration. Um, and then what year did you come? Just three years ago. <laughs> yeah, what year is that make? That makes it. So, okay, so it's probably, it's probably 1819 or, or spans those two years before you came on. And then, yes, you can take it from there. But that's, that's sort of where it started. No, that's great perspective, Jill. I just wanted to highlight how long these discussions have been going on. And I think it's time to take it to the next uh, steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, I think um, Ms. McCammon pointed out the part that, you know, this is, this is based on educational, not trying to have equity of all schools between the libraries. Because that was one of my thoughts was, do we want to wait until we come online with the other schools before we start renovating the current the schools which are not part of the building plan currently in the works. Um, but I think that this is where, um, to that point, that, that this should move forward to begin to, so that all schools have the, meet the educational set and necessity, sorry, that we're looking to achieve. I do think it would be helpful to remind the board both of the timeline and of the educational drivers, as well as the physical space plant drivers. Uh, I, if, if it were to go to, if it would be, if it were to go forward to the board, would you want a part of that discussion to be a reminder about the actual plan of the, the actual uh, physical plan of the drawings and the components of it? Or, or is it, is it a wee bit, do you want it a wee bit higher level than that? Do you think it merits like going over again? Or is it, well, they, they understand, we understand that from the elementary components, or do you want to continue to have a wee discussion literally about the physical layout and the plans? No, 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 no. Okay. okay, okay, good, good. I think they can be included, but I don't think the board needs to good. troubleshoot okay. them. Good. There'll be time for that. Okay, so I, I, I guess we can move forward or we can recommend that we add this to, but I don't think this is a Tuesday discussion, but this would be something I think that the committee agrees to move forward to add as a budget item for 2022. When would you be ready, Alan, to have this discussion with the board? And when do you need to, if you're interested in having this in your budget process? Um, Conceptually, it would be, I don't want to need, unless Michael, if you're looking at me, if there's any press and deadlines or otherwise, I, I don't think that there, there is. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to unnecessarily, um, you know, advance the project where it doesn't need to be. So clearly we're going to have to do some thinking about uh, the funding for the project where the, where those funds come. So it potentially could, it could potentially come out of this regular meeting, perhaps the next one or the one thereafter and be happy. Unless there's a pressing, and I'm not aware of any other pressing issue. This is, we're happy to just bring it forward and uh, continue the momentum around it. We're going to have to have discussions with uh, the, re the respective town bodies about this because it's a capital project. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. So as, as a committee, then we will indicate that we're recommending that the solar map move forward and that and that I'll be you know in the in the subsequent meeting and then at a date to be determined. The library. Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. Our last item is uh, public comment. Michelle. Good morning. If you would like to speak during public comment, please click the participants icon on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Next, click the raised hand option. Please state your name and address once identified. You will have up to three minutes to comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, hey, thank you very much. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Ms. McCammon, all in favor? I'm in favor, thank you. Thank you guys very much and happy holidays.